Praise God. Let's just say this out loud. I thank God for the Word. I thank God for the Word. He sent His Son, he sent his son. but he left, he left His book. I believe the Word of God. Word it's inspired. It, inspired. it inspires me. It I hear it, I hear and it brings faith. It brings I obey it, I obey and it brings freedom. I do its principles, and it gives me success. I thank God for the Word. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. Hallelujah. I'm teaching in this series on things the Holy Spirit will never do. Things the Holy Spirit will never do. We talked about some already, and uh, we're moving into the fourth one tonight. I'm not going to go back and review but all of these things are being recorded, and all of the series we've done very soon will be ready in our new bookstore. How many noticed a little bit of construction activity going on out there? And uh, we put up, I told, I told my staff, I said, get some curtains, get some curtains so we can block it off. Dear Lord, I mean, it looks like a, a high school football game. I, they got blue and gold in there. That's all right. That's what I played for, the Eagles, blue and gold. But uh, behind that, that counter is gone. The floor is being prepared. Carpet's being laid tomorrow. Uh, bookshelves are coming in. We've ordered books from several different authors, and uh, it won't be long till we'll be using those big scissors again that we used last Sunday in uh, dedicating the new children's ministry. We're going to dedicate our new bookstore and it's going to be one of the best in the region. Amen? Anybody excited about that? Well, we're looking forward to it, so you'll have to pardon our construction. Amen. Things the Holy Spirit will never do. We're continuing in that. And on Wednesday night, it's more of a teaching atmosphere. And so let's receive the taught Word of God. Amen? He will never manipulate you for a response. So you never have to question his motives in the relationship. Things the Holy Spirit will never do. I could entitle this series, How a Relationship with the Holy Spirit is Different Than Any Other Relationship You'll Have. How many have noticed that sometimes and oftentimes that people, whether they mean to or not, or whether they do it intentionally or not, will manipulate you for a response that they want to receive. It's, it's, I call it the spirit of manipulation. You see it in politics. You see it in education. You see it in business. It's a manipulation. I, I've got a little nickname for it. I call it slither. How many know what I'm talking about? Slither. They're asking a question, not because they really want to know the answer to the question, but they want to manipulate your thinking into where you give the response that they're looking for in order that they can manipulate you further. And I want to tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not a manipulator. And this may seem kind of dry to you, but... It's one of the greatest points in, to my life. I've been manipulated in my life by a lot of different ways and a lot of different people. How many know you can even manipulate yourself? You can talk yourself into things. You can manipulate yourself, but the Holy Spirit will never manipulate you for a response. And I don't know about you, but I'm thrilled about that. I never have to question his motives. Everything he does, whether I like it or not, even when he corrects me, if he rebukes me, if he gets on my case a little bit, how many know the Holy Spirit can do that? But his motive is for my good. His motive is never to manipulate me. His motive is never to injure me. It's never to subtract from me. It's never to hinder me. It's never to hold me down. It's never to get something from me. Get a hold of this. The word manipulate literally means this, to exercise control or self-seeking influence over someone 
to establish control over their decisions and behavior for the manipulator's purposes. That's what manipulation is. When, when somebody begins to try to manipulate you, they're wanting to exercise control or self-seeking influence over you to establish control over your decisions and behavior for the manipulator's purposes. That's the difference between, take it in the political realm, that's the difference between a republic and a totalitarian state. A totalitarian state wants to manipulate the people with quote-unquote indoctrination and propaganda to get the response of the people that that state wants. But a constitutional republic says, you're free from our manipulation. We've almost forgot that in America. We think we live in a democracy. We were never intended to live in a democracy. We were intended to live in a constitutional republic where it is of the people, by the people, and for the people, and the government only governs with the consent of the governed, and it's not from the top down, it's from the grassroots up. That's a constitutional republic, a totalitarian state. In the political realm is, we're going to manipulate you. We're going to tell you what you can do, how you can buy, how much you can buy. I went to Walmart the other day. I've got an F-250. I don't even go into Walmart very much anymore. I don't like to have to self-check out. There's 55 cashier registers and two people working, and they want me to do their work. No, thanks. I'll go to Price Cutter. I'm just, I'm kind of ornery. How many can tell? I'm a little bit ornery. I don't like that concept. I have this old idea of customer service. You know, customer service. I kind of like, may I help you? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I like a human face occasionally. I am technologically savvy. I use it. I know how to check out. I just don't want 500 people in the line with two people up here when they could have 60 people working. Come on. Give me half a break. So I don't go into Walmart. I don't care if you love Walmart. We all like our different things. Enjoy your life at Wally World. I don't have a problem with that. But I went to fill up with diesel. And so I'm filling up. Well, I got an F-250. Diesel's pretty high right now. And so I just set the thing, you know, and let it go. Let it pump until it's done. And if it's empty, it's usually about $125. And it hit $100, click, cut it off. I went and I said, it's not full. But they wouldn't let me. I'd have to pull the card out, put it back in. I don't fill up at Walmart anymore. Why? I don't like totalitarianism. If I've got the money, I'll buy $500 worth. Keep the pump pumping. That's what I like. I'm not trying to give political statements here. I'm trying to give you an illustration of manipulation. We're going to control what you can buy, how you can buy, how much you can buy, what you can buy, what you can use. You, you can use a debit card here, you can use a credit card here, but we don't take cash anymore. Goodbye. I'm not extremely compliant. I'm a freeborn American and I'm a freeborn again believer. Just because somebody wants to manipulate me, I believe in free enterprise, which means I'm free not to do enterprise with you. I'm so glad I was able to work this into this teaching because I needed to get it off my chest. So having done that, I am hereby fulfilled and will continue in the teaching. <laughs> the, the Holy Spirit will never exercise control for his self-seeking influence over you to establish control over your decisions and behavior for his purposes. Why? Because you don't have anything he needs. The Holy Spirit is not looking to get something from you. And I want to tell you something else. Anybody that represents him will never be a manipulator. Anybody in the church world, anybody in the educational world, that manipulates in the name of the Holy Spirit is, is lying to you. Never manipulates. 
God is not looking. I know we always talk about God is in control of everything. No, he's not. He didn't drive you here. He didn't comb your hair. He didn't brush your teeth. He didn't decide what you were going to eat. He gave you free will. He is Lord of our lives, but he doesn't treat us as a dictator. He lays out things that we are to do and are not to do, but within those parameters, he says, have a good life. Live in life. Good friend of mine, and everybody here would know him if I called his name. And years ago, he was able to buy his first Lincoln Town Car. Remember those things? You know, big as a boat. And uh, he traveled all across the nation. He drove a lot. And he, uh, he, he was able to buy a new Lincoln Town Car. And he went to the Lincoln dealership and was really trying to be spiritual. Let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit. He's not nearly as super spiritual as some of his people are. That's good. I've never heard me say that. The Holy Spirit is not nearly as super spiritual as some of his people are. And my dear friend Mike, he, uh, he, was, he was talking to the Holy Spirit. And at that time, he, he said, at that time, I wondered, uh, oh, I had to hear from God on everything. And he said, I, he said I, liked, I liked a white one and a navy blue one. And he said, I went out in the parking lot, and I stood out there, and he said, oh, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, oh God, Holy Spirit, I need to know your plan for my life. I need to know your will. Thank you that you provided enough money to buy a Lincoln Town car in the ministry that I can travel in. Thank you. Lord, I, I, uh, I don't know which is your will, the blue one or the white one, the blue one, the blue one or the white one. Which one is anointed? Oh, God, oh, God, show me. I don't want to miss you, God, and get a blue one when I ought to get a white. I mean, he's out there in the parking lot on and on and on and on and on. And finally, he took a breath, and he said he heard the Holy Spirit and his spirit say, I'm not driving it. <laughs> and Mike, Mike looked back up the Lord and said, well, I know you're not driving. He said, that's up to you. I, I don't care what color you drive. It doesn't make any difference to me. You know, paint it half blue, half white. If it, it floats your boat, I don't care. The Holy Spirit's not a manipulator. He's not a dictator. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Now the Lord is that Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Manipulation wants to control you. Manipulation wants to intimidate you. Now I'm going to show you how the Holy Spirit will never manipulate you. Anybody glad the Holy Spirit doesn't manipulate you? Now, I didn't say he won't rebuke you. I didn't say he won't correct you. I didn't say he won't chastise you. I didn't say he won't get on your case when you need it. He will because he loves you. But he never will manipulate you. Number one, the Holy Spirit has no need to exercise control for his self-seeking purposes since you have nothing he needs. When people want to manipulate you, they, you've got something they want. It may be money. It may be time. It may be energy. It may be just your response. It may be just your agreement with them. And they manipulate you for a response. The Holy Spirit doesn't need that. Next, he will never manipulate you by lying to you. Now, this may seem basic, but a lot of God's people don't know it. The Holy Spirit is incapable of lying. The Bible said it is impossible for God to lie. He cannot lie. The book of Numbers says God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he would repent. Now, I don't know about you, but that's one of my favorite verses in the Scripture. God is not going to lie to me, to manipulate me, to get me to do something. He's going to tell me the truth. The Bible said he is the spirit of truth. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. He'll never manipulate you by lying to you. Number next, he will never manipulate you by lying about you. What's that mean? The Holy Spirit is not a gossip. And anybody full of him isn't either. 
Well, I got quiet in here. I've been people ought to say amen. The Holy Spirit will not manipulate you by lying about you to others and then letting you know that he's lied about you to others. I mean, think about this. He doesn't even have to lie about us. He'd just tell the truth. That'd be bad enough. <laughs> I mean, he knows our every little blemish and every little idiosyncrasy and every little personality quirk we have. But the Holy Spirit is absolutely trustworthy in holding confidences. He holds confidences. I was with a man of God the other day, and we hadn't been together for a long time. And uh, I'm on his board, and we were doing some things, some big things in the kingdom of God. And uh, he looked up at me, and I think he gave me the greatest, one of the greatest compliments I've ever been given in my life. He said, your trustworthiness is worth all of the money in the world to me. He looked at me and said, I know that you would never lie to me. I'm telling you, friend, if you can have a relationship like that where people say that about you, your trustworthiness is worth more than all the money in the world to me. I know that you would never lie to me. Every time we sign our emails or our text, at the end, we put O-C-I-I. -I. And people wouldn't know what that means unless we let the cat out of the bag. And I'm doing that right now for this group. O-C-I-I. -I. It means our covenant is intact. O-C-I-I. -I. Our covenant is intact. Why can I serve on a board of a multi-million dollar ministry? Why can I be a vice president of that, that, that ministry? Why? Because your trustworthiness is worth all the money in the world to me. No, he doesn't pay me. I'm not on salary. Your trustworthiness. Let me tell you something, friend. Boy, I feel this in my spirit. I know I'm just in the teaching mode tonight, but are you all here? I'm telling you, the trustworthiness of the Holy Spirit is beyond understanding. He will never talk about you to somebody else. He may put a burden on somebody else's heart about you. He may say to somebody in their spirit that's a prayer warrior, you need to pray. You need to pray for Brother Mike. You need to pray for Lawana. Lawana's going through something, but he will never go into detail of the pain that she's going through. He'll just put Lawana on your heart to pray for. But you can be honest with him. He holds his confidences. Oh. Hallelujah. Say, Brother Mike, why is that so big to you? Because so many people don't. Even in the church world, so many people don't. I have people come to me and care and, and share things, and, and I'll go, we'll go to our grave with them. Why? Confidence. It's a confidence. And if you really are in tune with the Holy Spirit, you don't go around talking about other people. It's not part of his nature. The closer you are, come on, I'm teaching right, right here. The closer you get to the Holy Spirit, the less slither there is you're not you're not I, and 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 you ever notice people will say this look i'm not telling you this to to to, uh, to gossip I, i'm just telling you this so you can pray that's manipulation that's manipulation be careful of that thing be careful of that thing i believe god's going to take some of you and put you in some tremendous areas of opportunities an influence where you're able to touch people's lives. But one broken confidence will end your influence forever in that place. I have access to some of the greatest men of God in the kingdom right now. I've walked with many of them. 
Why do I have access? The one I was just talking about, we've been together for 52 years. Why? I don't talk about confidences. I don't know why I'm taking so long on this. You know, sometimes you need to get a Zechariah anointing. You know what, Zachari I'm talking about the priest, Zechariah. And Gabriel came, I was reading that the other day. Gabriel came and said, you know, your wife that's rather old and so are you, but she's going to have a baby and he's going to be a son. And Zechariah starts out, oh, no, that can't happen. How can this be? And I love what Gabriel said. He said, he said that can't happen. And Gabriel said, I am Gabriel who stands before God. In other words, he's saying, don't mess with me, Jack. I'm telling you this is going to happen. I'm delivering a message from God. And he just kept talking. And you know what God told Gabriel to do? He said, just shut his mouth. Said, <laughs> and Gabriel said, okay, you're not going to talk until the baby's going to be born. Why did he do that? Because he was, he was mean? No. Sometimes God needs you to shut your mouth or you'll mess it up. Come on, don't point at anybody. Look right here at me. Sometimes you just get, need to get the anointing of a shut up of your bigger mouth. But the Holy Spirit will never manipulate you by lying about you. Put the next one up. He will never manipulate you by insulting your intelligence. Come on, this isn't salad bar stuff. Come on, think with me. The Holy Spirit will never insult your intelligence. I don't know about you, but I just... Doesn't it irk you? That's quite a word, irk. That's legitimate. Doesn't it irk you? Doesn't it bother you when people insult your intelligence? You know, if a salesman is trying to sell me something, just tell me the product. Tell me the benefits of the product. Let me make, but don't insult my intelligence by telling me that it's going to run my car, clean my kitchen, and comb my hair. I know it's not going to be able to do all those. Don't, 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 don't. Come on, this is good for me. I'm getting a few things out. Hey, come on. Don't insult. And the Holy Spirit, listen, think about this. He is the most brilliant creature in the universe. But he never insults your IQ. You ever been around highly intelligent <laughs> I just thought of a phrase. Have you ever been around highly intelligent, dumb people? <laughs> They're highly intelligent with IQ. But a hillbilly would say they don't have a lick of common sense. And they insult your intelligence. They act like, oh, you're so, you ought to be privileged to even be around my mind. You know, huh? You ought to be just glad that I would associate with you. One of the most amazing things about the Holy Spirit, it's all right, I just talked to you about the Holy Spirit today. He's the most brilliant creature in the universe, and he loves walking with an ignorant person like me. You say, Brother Mike, you're not ignorant compared to him. Compared to him. The Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of man. And yet he loves to walk with me. Oh, come on, somebody will be happy. He loves to talk with me. You can laugh with him. You can cry with him. You can give him your brilliant ideas. And he'll act like he's impressed. He will. I've gone to Lord. <laughs> A lot of times I say, Lord. I have got this plan. It is a phenomenal strategy. I have figured out the funding, the teams, the tactics, uh, the timing. I've got the flow charts. I've got the structure. It's wonderful. And he must be chuckling because he's the one that put it in my heart in the first place. And I'm so ignorant, I thought I thought of it. And I'm coming and bringing it to him, but I just find that out later. I come to him. He doesn't say, yeah, I've been trying to get that into your head for 30 years. He just, he'll, it's almost like, it's almost like he'll say, wow, that's brilliant, Mike. 
Come on, anybody get in the field? I'm trying to change your feel about walking with the Holy Spirit. We've got, he's the Holy Ghost. Woo! You know what I'm saying? It's a ghost. Is it? No. He walks by your right side. <laughs> Boy, I can't help it. When I start teaching about the Holy Spirit, something happens in me. He walks by your white right side. He's your comforter. He's your friend. He's your guide. He's your master mentor. He's your teacher. He not only walks by your right side, he lives within your body as the temple of the Holy Spirit. He knows the worst about you, but he believes the best about you. He has great expectation for you. There's nothing like walking with him, and he will never manipulate you by insulting your intelligence. Never. And those that are full of the Holy Spirit will never insult other people's intelligence. As a mentor with protégés, I'll have some protégés come to me and they'll say, Dr. Mike, I've got this idea. And they'll explain this grand idea that I did 38 years ago. And to me, it's elementary. But the Holy Spirit in me doesn't say things like this. Wow, you just learned that? Oh, I thought you were farther along than that. I don't know how you've been around me this long, haven't learned any more than that. I know people that claim to be representing the Lord, and that's the way they talk to people. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is gracious. The Holy Spirit's gracious. So I get all excited with them. I, I remember Greg, pastor, young man. He said, I preach, I preached a series on this, and he gave the subject, and he said, I think it's a book. I think it's a book. I really believe God wants me to write a book, and it'd be great. Let me tell you some of the chapters. Oh, and some of the content. And I had that, I had seven chapters on that book with seven titles in my MacBook. I just hadn't written it and released it yet. At that subject, I know, I, you know, I didn't say, oh, come on, man, Greg, I've already have, come on, man. You just, no, I just sat there and went, wow, that's profound. It was. Wow, that's anointed. Man, that can help people. And then he said, yeah, but I, I don't know how to write a book. I said, I do, and I'm your mentor. He said, well, I don't have the money to get started. I said, I do. Would $1,000 today get you started on work helping with it? He said, he said, I don't know how to structure a book. I said, I do. He said, I don't know how to graphic design. I said, neither do I. That's what you use the $1,000 for. <laughs> and the Lord just released me, and I laughed, and I said, Greg, that's phenomenal. And the Lord gave me seven chapters about that subject years ago. And it's been sitting in my MacBook, and the Lord just told me to give it to you, and you make it yours, and you put your words in it, and I'll help you find a publisher, and I'll help you find an editor, and you write the book. He said, oh, I'll say it's co-written. I said, no, you won't. I said, that's your book. You understand how you operate, folks? Come on. Come on, I'm helping you if you'll receive this. Don't be insulting to people. The Holy Spirit is never insulting to people. You, you, it may be something that you think is so trivial, but, but it's big to them, so make it big. Big. Oh, hallelujah. Celebrate it. Woo! Never heard anything like that except the last time I looked at my MacBook. But you'll leave that out, okay? He never will manipulate you by insulting your intelligence next. He will never manipulate you through unreasonable demands. He will never demand things out of you. Now, he'll, he'll challenge you to do impossible things. He'll do that. But he'll never make unreasonable demands from you. And friend, if you're dealing with somebody that claims to be filled with the Holy Spirit and they're constantly making unreasonable demands on you, that's not the Spirit of God. I tell you, I'm helping you if you'll receive this stuff. I know I'm not running and shouting tonight, but I'm teaching right. 
Don't make unreasonable demands. The Holy Spirit, that's manipulation. It's manipulation. Well, if you can't do this, then you can't be a part of it. Ever heard people do that? Well, if you can't, you can't do that, and it's unreasonable. Well, if you can't do that, you can't be a part of it. What's my response? I won't be a part of it. It's unreasonable. It's unreasonable. I, I, I'm always going for the impossible, but not the unreasonable. If I don't get a, a if, if I get a check in my spirit, how many know what a check in your spirit is? It's the way the Holy Spirit talks in this kind of language. Uh-uh. You ever hear that down inside? Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> Wayne said he goes, eh. you know, he'll never manipulate you through unreasonable demands. Next, he will never manipulate you through threatening to leave you if you don't, if he doesn't get his way. He will never manipulate you through threatening to leave you if he doesn't get his way. Well, we just don't see eye to eye. Now, you know God has told you to do something together with a brother. Say, well, we just don't agree on everything, so I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. What that is is manipulation. Here's what they want you to say. Oh, no. Don't go. If you want to really give them a wake-up call, <laughs> come on, in business. Come on, I'm, I'm helping your business negotiations right now, too. In a business negotiation. No, we just can't do that. that no, nope, I'm out. Stand up. Close your portfolio. Have a nice day. What's the manipulation factor? Oh, no, don't leave. We'll change that. No. I might change it if you'll discuss it with me and show me why it's beneficial for us to change it. But don't threaten to leave me because I'm not in agreement with everything. Oh, this is real good teaching, Brother Mike. This is helping me a lot. Good, good. Then don't leave if you don't agree. I've seen people in churches where I've pastored before. It hadn't happened here yet. I've only been here 15 months, so, you know. But they'll come in and they'll say, well, I just, uh, I'm just going to leave this position. I'm just not going to do it anymore. And I, just, I just feel that God doesn't want me to be in this position anymore. That's our attitude. And I, here's what I'll do. Here's what I say. And I mean it. I would never impugn your integrity in hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I receive your resignation. And you know the response I get back? Well, I can pray about it a little bit. I'm not sure. Maybe, I, you know, maybe we need to pray about it a little bit. No, you already told me. If you're running a business, I just don't feel like I fit here. I, I just, I, I don't feel like I fit here and I'm just not getting enough money. Oh, I understand. I understand. I'm going to pray that the Lord will help you to find the place where you belong. That's manipulation. Now, if I'm running a business and they feel like they're not getting paid enough money, there's a way to ask for a raise. But the way to get a raise is not, I'm going to leave if you don't give it to me. Aloha. Come on, you got to love me anyway. Come on. I'm trying to help you. You don't have to mean spirited, be mean spirited. But what I'm trying to tell you is, folk, what the Holy Spirit will never do. He will never manipulate you through threatening to leave you. Never. Now, he'll get on your case. He'll rebuke you. He'll reprove you. He'll withdraw fellowship from you. He'll do a lot of things that will make you want to get it right if you don't listen to his mercy. But he's not this manipulator. Come on, next. He will never manipulate. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that. He, he will never manipulate you with slither questions. Slither. Say, is that, in the is that in the dictionary? I don't know, but it's in mine. Slither questions. Slither questions. 
you know, questions to get you to say something. You know, when I was in high school, I was on the debate team. And there's, there's debate techniques. You ask questions. Anybody studying to be an attorney knows. You ask questions to set up the next question, to set up the next question, to lead them into the trap, to snap it shut. Slither questions. You know, watch this. We'll put it in the Christian context, in the church will. Watch this. You know, I really admire your walk with God. But uh, have you ever thought about that you may need to change this just a little bit or do this if you really love Jesus? Come on, anybody here in the slither? Now, I, I, if, if, a, if a Christian friend says to you, you know, I really love you and I admire your walk with the Lord. But have you, I could be wrong, but have you ever considered that maybe you need to change this? And if you did, the Lord would bless you more in this area. That's not slither. The slither part comes. You ever consider you need to change this or do this? Watch this. So you can serve Jesus better. If you really love the Lord. Well, what Christian's going to say, I don't love the Lord, so I'm not going to. So what have they done? They've used a leverage technique that every attorney knows to get you to say something and commit to something that you're not sure you ought to commit to because you don't want to be perceived as not loving the Lord. How do you answer that? I'd be glad to change anything. The Holy Spirit instructs me to do so. And I'll always be open. But my love for the Lord is not based on your opinion. Hello? You'll be surprised how people get quiet. Folks, don't say, why are you talking to us this way? I'm trying to tell you, when those kind of things happen, that's not the Holy Ghost. And it may not be a bad person. It may be a person that has Holy Spirit in him, but they've got this problem, and, and they're the one that needs to change. If you really love the Lord, to serve the Lord better. Who made you my judge about how I serve the Lord better? Who made them your inspector general? Good preacher. Yes, it is. It's good. It's right. You don't have to be mean-spirited about it. Folks, what I'm trying to talk to you about is we shouldn't have these manipulation techniques in us. The Holy Spirit lives in us. This is what the world does. This is what people that don't, aren't filled with the love of God does. Jesus said, hey, the, the Gentiles are the ones that don't know the Lord. Exercise dominion over one another. But it shall not be so among you. You're not going to be trying to manipulate and dominate your brother or sister. But if you'll be great, be the servant of all. If you'd be the minister, let him be the servant of all. We, got a, we have a different kingdom with a different mindset. And when you walk with the Holy Spirit, all this manipulation will get out of you. Let me tell you something else. <laughs> the ones in the church world that accuse others of manipulation are the manipulators. <laughs> I need to get somewhere where we can shout and have a praise break because we're just walking through this right now. You know, have you ever noticed this principle? If people are constantly accusing everybody else of something, that's the problem they have. There's an 80% chance if they're accused all the time, I'm not talking about just occasionally saying, that's the problem they have. 
The big, the big word now on social media, I'm, I just laugh all the time, uh, the narcissist, the narcissist. Half of them don't even know what it means. But the narcissist, the controlling narcissist. And there's a few people aren't that they talk about it every other post. The narcissist, the narcissist, the narcissist. And I know some of those people. They're narcissists. They're controllers. They control in their home. They control in their marriage. They control, they try to control in their church. They try to control at their job. They're narcissists. <laughs> Is this too much for you? If you're a guest, there are some times where we just rejoice. But, but, but we're getting smart tonight if you let yourself get smart. I'm going to get off this. Go on. Next. He will never manipulate you by bringing up your failures. Other people will. Well, I'm sure glad God forgave you, but. Uh, and, you know, they don't even have to say anything. I'm sure glad God forgave you. <laughs> You sure needed it. That's manipulation. What God forgives, he forgets. The Holy Spirit will never bring up your past failures. He'll never bring up your past sins. Not ever. Once they're under the blood of Jesus, he never brings it up. Now, he will deal with you about your present shortcomings. That's called conviction but he's convicting you to draw you to himself so he can help you fix that problem. He's not trying to remind you of what a loser you were. How you failed, how you messed up. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. Peter had denied the Lord three times, and Jesus cooks a fish breakfast on the beach, they've been fishing all night. He feeds them all. He pulls Peter aside, and he doesn't start this way. Well, Pete, I told you so. I told you at the Last Supper you're going to deny me three times. You didn't believe it. I told you so. I knew it. You did it. Yep. 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 I changed your name to Peter. I need to change it back to Cephas, which means read. You're all over the place. You're not bipolar. You're octopolar. You've got eight, eight levels. I don't know if you'll ever amount to anything. How could I trust you to ever do anything again? He never does that. He never does that. Peter had repented. Jesus doesn't make one mention by the Holy Spirit of his failure. Not one. He just starts working with him. Hey, Peter, you love me? Do you agape me? Will I philos you? Do you have 100% giving me of self-love? Will I have a friendly love? Well, we'll start from there. Feed my sheep. Hey, Pete. Yeah, Lord, you love me? Well, Lord, yeah, I philos you. I have a friendly love. Oh, okay. Well, feed my, feed my lambs. Hey, Pete. You really love me? And finally Peter goes, oh, Lord, you know, because I thought I did, but I blew it. I mean, that's what he's saying. And, and Jesus never even responds to any of that. He just says, feed my sheep. I've got you scheduled to preach the keynote address on the day of Pentecost. Yep, I'm not going to remind you about your past failures, Peter. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Oh, incidentally, buddy. When you're old, they're going to take you where you don't want to go, and you're going to die a death you didn't want to die. It's not my punishment. I just thought I'd let you know. But he doesn't bring, <laughs> doesn't bring up your failures. So look at me. So quit bringing up one another's failures. If you claim to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't, re don't remind people how they messed up. They're having to deal with that probably every day of their life. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. He constantly, ying, 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 ying. I can guarantee you Paul had that happen to him. He used to kill people. You see the person on the third row? You killed her husband when you were Saul of Tarsus. What makes you think you got a right to stand up there and preach? And so what does, 
What does Paul write? Forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth unto the things that are before. And you're going to have to do that. Quit manipulating by bringing up people's failures. Next. What time is it? We're good. He will never manipulate you through condemnation. God does not condemn. Say that out loud with me. Say it again. Say it a third time. <clears throat> he convicts, but he does not condemn. Now, you can't be condemned. The Bible says, he that believes not on the Son is condemned already. But the nature of the Holy Spirit is when he's dealing with you, when you're doing something wrong, his nature is not a baseball bat. His nature is an invitation. Now, the invitation can get pretty tough if you don't listen. Let me tell you, let me tell you about the rebuke of the Holy Spirit. Agree immediately, unhesitatingly, without negotiation. When the Holy Spirit says, Mike, you're doing that wrong. Yes, sir, I am. I don't know how I'm doing it wrong, but you say I'm doing it wrong, and you're never wrong. Now, you're going to have to mentor me how I'm doing it wrong and show me how to correct it. And, sir, I will obey immediately. I will not hesitate. I will not negotiate with you. If you say so, that's the way it is. And if you'll do that quickly, quickly, good, just do it quickly. I hear people talk all the time. Well, I'm wrestling with the Holy Spirit. Let me help you with this. You're going to be hurt. Ask Jacob about wrestling with God. He doesn't turn out good at all. <laughs> he wrestled with the Lord that one night. Yo, I was an angel. Read it again. He worshiped him, and that angel accepted his worship. It was what we call a theophany, a pre-incarnate manifestation of Jesus, the Son of God. <laughs> and Jesus said, let me go. The day breaks. How many know he could have gone any time he wanted to go? I can guarantee you, it's not, it's not, what do they call it, WWE wrestling when you're wrestling with Jesus. It's the real deal. And he said, I'll not let you go till you bless me. And the Lord says, okay, got to work with you a little bit. What's your name? And he said, liar, con man, trickster, can't be trusted. That's me. Jacob, that's what it meant. He said, oh, good. Now that you've admitted that, I'll change your nature. And your name is now Israel. As a prince, you have power with God. But then he reached down, and Jacob wouldn't let him go, and he reached down, and he touched his hip. He just reached down and went, Eek. and the hip went out of joint. <laughs> I'm going to let you go. If you do that. And the Bible said the rest of Jacob's life, he walked with a limp. Why? He didn't agree immediately, enthusiastically, unhesitatingly. He wrestled. If you want to avoid the limp, learn to agree. When the Holy Spirit says, stop, don't slow down, stop. The Holy Spirit says, watch out for that, watch out for that. Just, you say, well, Brother Mike, we can't. I mean, I hear people say this all the time. You know, occasionally in my life, I've heard from the Lord. Yeah, it ought to be occasionally every hour. The Bible said, my sheep know my voice. It isn't a matter of a big, booming voice from heaven. It's, it's just, it seems right. In the book of Acts, <laughs> Lee, you and I were talking about it before service, where it said, it seemed right to us and the Holy Ghost. The Bible said, the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. So if you're walking in relationship with the Holy Spirit, He'll put the right things in your heart. It'll just seem right. It just seems right. Hallelujah. Anybody tell your pastor is trying to liberate you tonight? The Holy Spirit's not a manipulator. Next. He will never manipulate you by fueling your drama. <laughs> Are we having any fun tonight? You ever have people manipulate you by just trying to fuel your drama? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Drama queens and drama kings. <laughs> oh, that's right. I understand. <laughs> He'll never play that game. 
He will never fuel your drama in order to get favor from you. In fact, he'll probably look at you and say, cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. I had a person come to me not long ago. They're not here. They don't even attend this church. Come to me. And it was just all drama, 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 drama. Well, if God is good, why not? And I just can't say, I mean, I mean, I mean. And she was supposed to be asking me questions. She wouldn't ask me anything. She wanted to dominate the conversation. And so finally, I just buttered in. And I said, well, let's just come to the conclusion then that you believe God is a liar and his word won't work. And so you and I don't have much to talk about. We don't have a frame of reference, do we? Now, this person, I'm not talking about a lost person or somebody that doesn't know the Lord. I'd be much more gracious now. I'm talking about somebody. I mean, this lady, she didn't come to our church. This lady thought, you know, she's, she's up there. I'm telling you, folks, we got a lot of self-appointed prophets and prophetesses today that are nuttier than a fruitcake. I mean, goofy as Bessie Bugs. And the Holy Spirit's not in that nonsense. You know, and they're going to, yea, thus saith the Lord, one time. And then they're looking at me. Well, I just don't believe God keeps his word. I, 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 so I, 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 finally, I try to be gracious. Oh, you know, you know he does. Let me give you some. Well, let me show you. I said, well, let's just show you. Well, go ahead then. I'll, let's just report. God, she believes you're a liar and your word doesn't work, so we have no frame of reference. <sighs> Mouth dropped them. You call me a liar? I said, no, you call God a liar. I can't agree with anybody that calls God a liar. You don't want my mentorship. You don't want an answer. You want to have a rant and rave party and get in my face. And I've got a whole flock of sheep that want to hear what I have to teach them in the Word of God. Evidently, you're not assigned to me, and I'm grateful I'm not assigned to you. So hopefully you'll find somebody that can help you because I'm sure I'm not him. Hallelujah. That's how you keep from burning out in the ministry. That's how you keep from having a nervous breakdown. I am not rewriting the script for drama queens or drama kings. I'll help anybody that's hurting. I'll listen. I'll listen to them. I'll help them. I'll pray with them. I'll, I'll provide for them. But I will not fuel their drama. Because for me to fuel their drama is manipulating them. Boy. Some of you need to hear that about some of your relatives. Come on. Well, I'm your aunt, and you, and you ought to treat me. You're a drama aunt. I love you. We've got the same, same DNA. But when you get into this drama mode, you are like fingernails on a chalkboard. Jesus would never do that. No, he just called them a generation of snakes and say, how can you escape the damnations of hell, Matthew 23? Read the Bible again. You know, I think it would be good for Christians to come up with this new idea. Read the Bible. Holy Spirit will never buy into your drama. Have you ever gone to talk to him and you got into the drama deal? And you think you're going to manipulate. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> and you think you're going to manipulate him with your drama. And he just like, he's like, ah, not buying it. I mean, I've actually, you know me, I'm kind of strange. Don't say amen. The Bible says we're all peculiar. But I have this little thing where I go, wah, wah, wah. If I'm watching the news a lot lately, I go, wah, wah, wah. we got so many whiny babies. And uh, I went to the Lord one time, and I was, I, was, I was upset. I just don't understand this about these people, about that, and about something else. And it was several years ago, blah, blah, blah. And I, he just let me get it all out. And I was just full of drama about it. And when I stopped talking in my spirit, I heard the voice of the Lord. Profound. Wham, wham, wham. Shot me down, man. Shot me down. I said, yes, Lord. Yeah, I got it. You're right. I'm just a whiny baby. 
I'm just feeling sorry for myself. You've gone through a lot more than this for me. Yeah. And then he can start talking to you, and he can start helping you. But he'll never manipulate you by feet. Next. Ah, oh, we've reached number, number next, seven. Whole new thing. It, I, it's the wrong number. Don't pay any attention to it. I'm not a number man. If you want a math class, Dean, go to the state college. It, whoever typed that, who typed that? Oh, well, never mind. I don't know who typed it. He will. We're just, we're just going to start this, and then I'm going to quit. Are you all glad you came tonight? We'll pick this up next week. The Holy Spirit will never give you something directly that you're to receive through His appointed mentorship in your life. Now, that is profound. What I'm giving you tonight is deep. I mean, we're laughing about some of it, but there's some deep truths here. I just believe I get everything straight from the Lord. There isn't anybody gets everything straight from the Lord. Anybody tells you that is either deluded or egotistical. The Bible puts people in our lives that he uses to train us. And I learned this when I was a very young man, and it has brought great uh, how do I want to say it? great, uh, I'll just say great success in a lot of areas of my life. Why? I learned that God never gives me something directly that he's appointed a mentor in my life to teach me. And I reject the teaching of the mentor, and then I go to God. God, tell me. Right over there. Right over there. I put him in your life. I want to say something about the emerging church. And uh, come on up to the piano. I'm going to say something about that. There is a thing called the emerging church. The emerging church. Here's the description of the emerging church. All of us are exactly the same. We're all on the same level. We just come together and love one another. And that's the way the church works. That's a lie. We are not all the same. There are things, I'll use a practical illustration. There are things Richard knows about hitting a golf ball that I have not learned. It's nauseating, really. I go play with him. Isn't it, Chuck? It's ridiculous. You know, and I, I do all the things right. Grip is right. Approach. Good. Richard walks up. Richard walks up. And I'm walking away saying, help me to love him, Jesus. Not really. I like his shots. i tell you a little secret because he wouldn't hear me if I said this and if I didn't say it too loud in the mic. He hits some bad ones too. But he knows more about it than I do. I used to play a lot of golf, but traveling for 24 years, you know, I didn't carry my clubs with me. So I'm, when I go with him, I'm watching him. I'm trying to learn, you know. He's a mentor. Now, I could go to the Lord and say, Lord, what am I doing wrong? It's causing a slash. Father, I, I'm ready to receive. I believe I receive in Jesus' name. Show me, Lord. Show me. Show me. Show me, Lord. Show me. Have an angel keep it straight right down the middle. I'm asking you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, yes, amen. Lord, what am I doing wrong? You're not asking Richard. Now, that's kind of a crazy illustration, but you see what I'm talking about? <laughs> Oral Roberts made a statement that was phenomenal. 
He told a friend of mine, he said, I've been picked up at airports by countless numbers of youth pastors that was sent to pick me up to take me to my hotel. To take me to my hotel. These are young ministers just going into the ministry. This is Oral Roberts. He's built a university for the glory of God. He sent healing teams all around the world. He brought the healing move of God in the 1950s. And a youth, here's what Oral Roberts said. Not one youth pastor asked me one question about ministry. Think of that. Think about that. I mean, if I was wanting to play in the NBA, which is a stretch, but if I was wanting to play in the NBA and I had the opportunity to pick up Michael Jordan at the airport to take him to a hotel, I'm not going to talk to him about the weather. I'm not going to talk to him about what kind of shoes do you have coming out. Mr. Jordan, such an honor to drive you to your hotel today. Would you mind if I'd ask you three questions? I, I have aspirations to play professional basketball. And a mentor, I got to quit, but a mentor longs for a protege spirit to come into their arena. I've been in the ministry now over 50 years. I long for... That's why I have, why does Hector come up here and put your notes up there? Because he needs to get used to being up there. Why do you have him in an illustrated sermon? Because he got a protege heart. He's a young man that wants to learn. Why are you paying for his first semester in Bible college? He's got a protege heart. He's a young man. He wants to learn. He asks questions. <gasps> Lights my fire. Lights my fire. Why? God has placed something in me for Him. Now He's placed something in me for all of you because I'm your pastor. So I'm a pastoral mentor to you. But there's different kinds of mentorship. If you want to learn how to sell projects, if you want to learn how to have great Southern Gospel harmony, Mike Smalley was with me at the last show, R.W. He, 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 he looked online at how many albums, how many, CD, how many projects that the Blackwoods over the years have produced. It's unbelievable. So if I want to start a Southern Gospel group, I'm not going to ask Wayne. Because <laughs> God didn't put that in Wayne. He put it in the black ones. And neither am I, if I want to start a Southern Gospel group, going to go stand before God and say, I don't understand why you don't teach me how to do it. Teach me how to do it, Lord. Teach me how to do it. He's five yards away. Teach me how to do it. If I want to learn business, y'all understand what I'm saying? I gotta quit. The greatest, some of the greatest failures you'll ever make in your life is failure to recognize a divine appointment God brought into your life. I look back over my life. There were people God brought into my life when I was 21 years old, and I was so foolish I didn't recognize that God put them there for me to dig the gold out of them. And they wanted to teach me. They wanted to teach me. But I had this idea. Glory to God. I'm anointed. Hallelujah. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Woo! Glory to God. And dumb as a mud fence in several areas. Some of you in here think it's all the anointing. The anointing. The anointing is always on the man. Sorry. Joshua was anointed, but they failed at Ai. 
Why? Because the anointing wasn't on the plan. There was sin in the camp. The anointing, I tell you, I feel like I'm in a mentoring session tonight. Anybody receiving any mentorship? The anointing isn't always on the man. The anointing sometimes is on the plan. And if you'll discover the plan from the man or a woman that understands the plan, the plan works. It works. It works. It works. You know what I asked the Lord the other day? I got to quit. Eight o'clock. I asked the Lord this. I said, God, I feel it's in my heart. Lord, allow me to establish a mentoring institute at FWC. We're protégés that want to learn kingdom principles. And listen, I'm not talking about just kingdom principles in the ministry. That too. But I'm talking about kingdom strategies in government, kingdom strategies in business, kingdom strategies in education, kingdom strategies in entertainment. We need to take everything we can into every part of the world and influence it with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why I have protégés in my life that I mentor that are in politics. I've got protégés in my life that Karen and I mentor that are in the ministry. I have protégés in my life that I mentor that are in business. Why? Because the kingdom has principles. Oh, I don't want to quit. I just don't want to quit. You say, Brother Mike, you just, you got, you just go too long. I, I, just excuse me. I'm full for you. I said I'm full for you. I sit and, and, and get ready, and, and, and but when I get in front of you, there's stuff that comes out of me that I didn't plan. I'm full for you. Why? Because I see things in you. Some of you have to, I'm too old. Stop it. I'm too uneducated. Stop it. I'm too young. Stop that. Stop all that stuff. God has placed something in me that you need. Boy, that was an arrogant statement. Uh-uh. No, it's just the truth. God has placed something in you that I need. And I'm not talking about your money either. There's things that you know that I don't know. I have a financial manager because I don't understand investments. But Gary Losey does. He understands insurance. I don't. He does. So I let him mentor me. I let him train me. And I want to tell you something. You'll never be a mentor until you're a protege. You'll never be a leader until you're a follower. And God wants to take you to a new place. Stand up on your feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He will never manipulate you. We spent most of the day on that one. But that was good, wasn't it? We don't, and that's not for me, that's for Him. Give the, give the glory of the Lord. Never manipulate you. I tell you, I'll make you a promise. As long as Karen and I pastor your church and our church. As long as the Lord leaves me here. As far as I'm concerned, He can leave me here to the rapture. Now, you may not agree with that, I don't know, but that's where I'm at. But if He tells me to leave in three weeks, I'll leave three, whatever He tells me. I'm His servant. I'm his servant. But I will never, I will never manipulate you. You'll never get up, you'll never hear me get up here and slither with sad stories about how we need some money to fix this and do that. I'll never do that. Never do it. I'll get up here and talk to you about seed time and harvest, honoring God with the tithe, and the benefits of obedience. And then I'll pull my bill fold out first and she'll pull our checkbook out first and we'll give first to the need. And it'll always be significant seats. I'll never manipulate you, never. I'll never manipulate you for a response that I want. I'll be a, sh I'll be a straight shooter with you. I promise that before God, my hand before God. So if you sit there sometimes, I think he's manipulating. I think you're hearing the wrong voice. I will never manipulate you. I fear God. I fear God. I fear God. Glad you came tonight. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift up your hands to the Lord.
Come on, just praise the Lord a little bit. Give thanks to the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know what I want us to pray before they sing and we go? I want us to pray this prayer. Lord, make me like the Holy Spirit. I don't want to manipulate people. You know, that's what we want, folks. You know, sometimes you can manipulate people not even know it. Yet, You know, some people have done it so long that they don't even realize they're doing it. And I'm, I just pray, I'll pray it for me, Lord, if there's anything in my life that I don't realize that is manipulatory, if you'll show me, I'll get it out of my life. That's the attitude you need to have. You don't want to manipulate anybody. You don't want to, you don't want to do it. Just pray this prayer with me. Holy Spirit, make me more like you. I don't want to manipulate. If there's any manipulation in me, show me what it is. I'll repent of it. I'll remove it. And with your help, I'll walk in integrity without manipulation in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, glory to God.